Hi everybody, welcome back to the Watercolour Painting Channel. Today I'm going to be doing a lovely barn owl portrait for you, so let's roll that intro, let's see how we get on. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. As I said at the start, we're going to be doing a lovely watercolour of this barn owl. Now this particular barn owl was one of my own. I had lots of owls of different species over the years and used to fly hawks as well. But I was a little fitter. And um, yeah, Hooty I actually raised from a chick. It was about just under two weeks old. And I, well in fact it was probably only just over a week old. But raised him or her, we never did find that out either but raised him or her and uh, had him or her for 14 plus years. And finally, sadly, one day he was flying and a dog come around the corner, caught both of us by surprise, freaked Hootie out. He took off and was never to be seen again. We fought many, many weeks. In fact, it was months. Every time somebody knew, we posted everything up everywhere. Every time we had a report of a sighting, we were there, we were on it. Unfortunately, we never got to see Hooty ever again. Fortunately, he had or she had flying jesses on, so they weren't sort of cut ones. They would have not caught up or anything of that nature. They're designed that way. And um, I just hope that Hooty had a great end to his life and maybe, maybe may have found a mate and had some progeny and that would have been a fantastic ending to him but um, that was a long time ago and I've just carried a few photographs of Hootie and this is one of them and I felt that it would be really nice to show you how I get along with this today okay so I have already transferred the image to the paper the paper is a lovely Fabriano 100% cotton it's in a block and it is the hot press. So it is a very smooth surface. And it's not for everyone's cup of tea as a smooth surface, but I happen to like it. And I use this surface very, very often in my watercolors. It's only 140 pounds. It will lift and move, but it will settle back as it's a block and dry very, very flat. So that's the plus on that side. I will go through, you all know my palette, and the palette is always going to be listed under the details section of this video, so you'll be able to follow them. And at the same time, the line art will be on my Patreon for you to download. And if you are a patron watching this, of course, you can just download it and have a go at it yourself. So the line art will be there. And if you're not a patron, as I say, you can go onto my Patreon channel and download the image to um, to one side here and the line art and have a go at this one yourself. So without further ado, let's get on. Okay, as for brushes, I've got a few familiars here. Some of the different rounds of 10 or 12. This is a number eight, and this is probably about a number four. And yes, it is a number four. And I think this one is as low as a number two. There is a rigger. It's fairly a cheap one. I can't find my regular one right now, to be quite honest with you. And this lovely uh, dagger, which is from Rosemary as well. So, so without further ado, I'm starting to mix up a very soft, pale color. Now, it's a bit of a violet, and it's a little bit of a gray violet. It's not a very big purple, but I'm using it to put in all that subtle, lovely, shadowy color on Hootie's face, on his mask. People call this a mask, and it is just wonderful. I'm now coming in with some warm, uh, raw and burnt sienna to come around the edge of the mask. And you can see there's a lovely lot of little upright feathers. They do stick out sort of... Uh, directly up and down as it were as, a, as opposed to laying flat but I've restricted the flow and I didn't want them to go too far but they are just giving me a sense of the initial color got to go in with some darker ones later but this is all about layering this is all about complementaries allowing those colors to mix and flow and to join each other 
but the warmth and the cause. That's what it's about. And this is what I really enjoy about painting this barn owl picture for you because it is just a whole exercise in warm and cause. And all the time you're judging how warm or how cool or how dark or how light do I make it. But with watercolour on top of that, you've got to think of how much water do I want? How dark do I want the pigment to appear? And that's also very critical. Now I've actually laid some blues and oranges together in this one, allowing them to flow. But the water of the colour is not so great that they just lose themselves. I've held back on a little bit of water, so there's a little bit more pigment, so it restricts how far one colour will bleed into the other colour. Got to be a little bit aware of that. These colours are sort of, um, I don't know, not a bit creamy as opposed to sort of wheat tea, uh, if that's of any indication to you. But I'm working my way through and down the body of the bird. I'm not counting feathers. Please don't start doing that in this sort of painting. If you wanted to do that, you could, by all means, you could take the reference, you could be exacting with it, and you could count every feather, every mark. This is not about that. This is about a feeling. This is about the the sense and the beauty of the barn owl, the, the marvellous feather structure that these birds actually have. I put some darker, uh, cool colours in there just to add a bit of uh, roundness. There's a little bit less light at the front side of the bird and there's a bit more blue to the back. And that is going to work so well further in on the painting. Now I'm looking at the head, I'm just tapping off a little bit of the dampness so I can restrict the flow, lighten up a little bit as it comes down to the side of the head and that orange or that sort of, uh, sort of lovely colour on the top of the head gives way to a whiter colour as it comes down the side of the ears and around towards the chin. Now I'm going in, as you can see, and putting those darker parts into the mask. And I'm adding very similar cools and lights and darks into the body. We've gone over, it's pretty much all dried off. So I'm going over a damp surface, not totally dry, but I'm able to put on other colors and restrict their movement a little bit more, but they're not hard, they're not hard edges. If I get a hard edge, I can soon put a damp brush to it and take it away and just work that in and lose that edge. I'm adding every successive layer, I'm adding a little bit more detail. You do this in oil as well. You just go over the whole thing time and time again, adding extra layers of detail. Every time you do that, you're actually putting in less work, less brush marks, but you're thinking about it more and it takes a lot more consideration, therefore a lot more time. Now I'm starting to think about the background colors and the deep darks. I'm using a lot of earth tones, a lot of Indian red and some oranges and some umbers and even some sepia. Looking into those and then adding a bigger brush. I'm using the dagger brush because that's got so many angles to it. Yeah, you've got that tip, you've got that lovely flat side and of course you've got the big broad drag on it, uh, the whole brush. But I'm putting in a very first part of a background. Now if you look at it what I'm doing is I'm using those warm colors against those cool colors and on top of that I'm making them darker than the areas of the bird. So what that is called is counter change. That counter change allows me to push forward the subject and it doesn't have to be an owl. You can do it over any subject. You can use that device. It's a great way of throwing your object or your subject forward by where you've got something warm, try and make it a bit cooler. And if it's darker, make it a little bit lighter. It does allow you to have so many more tools at your disposal to make your, your object, in this case an owl, stand out. What I am doing though, is I'm really being greatly careful, very careful about cutting in around the edge and the shape. I One slip of the brush and it's wrecked. Putting the first layer in of the eye, a pretty much a dark, it's a blue and an umber, but there's a little bit more blue in it. It's not a very strong color, neither is it on the beak either. A little bit cooler towards the front end of the beak, but as it goes up towards what's called the sear, which is the fleshy part at the top of the beak, it gets a lot pinker, a lot warmer. 
And around the eye of the owl, they have this beautiful orange stained feathers. I don't know why, but it's obviously it's a, something to do with the light and allowing them to see. It's a bit like a sunshade, I suppose, but it does restrict having dark, uh, having light feathers, which would sort of be too much light getting into there. I'm guessing. I don't know. It's how I would pick it. Put in some cool colors. Now, these feathers are exactly the same feathers on the top of the mask, but as they're whiter and they've got shade between them, they're coming and looking a little bit cooler. So they represent their end on. What you're doing is you're looking down the feather, and that's why you're seeing this cooler, darker shade. I put a little subtle violet into the shade around that eye as well just to give it a little bit more now i'm looking back at the uh, background again the first layer is pretty much dried off and i'm coming in with a much darker much more serious pigment lots more pigment a little bit more water there but it generally it's a lot more pigment going in here as well you can see i've actually warmed up a lot of translucent orange going into that as well as my umbers and other colors that i've been using thus far look how rich that orange makes that and how that suddenly pumps out those blues those pale colors on the back of the head and down the back of the bird it's awesome because that's what it's all about and it's all complementary it works so very very well and around here just that lovely blue transition works again as it comes down towards the front of the face what i'm doing though is a lot of negative painting here watch this i'm putting in some paint and trying to expose the very very fine white feathers that come to a point down the front of the nose if you could see the whole owl face on you would have the those feathers that are almost pushing directly ahead as they come down and hide the beak uh, the beak goes way up in the back there but if you were to pull those feathers back you would see a very different looking beak but that's what makes them charm i know my owl so well. i used to have so many of these over the years at different times i have bred them and um this one was my last one and I raised him as I said earlier from a couple of days old and uh, such a delight but I'm just arresting the, I got off topic them I'm resting that paint at the back there it started to look as though it's going to cause me a problem so I dabbed it off put some more on afterwards and arrested its movement so it didn't cause a problem but nice and free at the bottom there allowing some of those blues and oranges to mix and just push away it's an abstract background but it really works and it does set this whole picture up i'm now coming in with a very very uh detailed sections i'm turning it on its side the little flecks in those feathers the little gray dark flecks some of them as they come down the back of the head and down into that area of the back of the head they get darker and they're always um they've got a white bit ahead and after them so they're not just a black dot and they're not even just a dot they're a little mark they're a little uh etch mark on the on most of the edges of the feathers and i'm probably not getting them all in the same place but they are enough to tell me the plumage and I will go back in very shortly with some lovely gouache just to put those white accents up on the bird and so that we get it finished off properly. Now, if you, I, I love my eye. I remember so many times with, with Hootie that you could just gently cup his head with your hand. And he was so tame. He was so good. And he never, ever uh, caused me a problem. But you could just gently push your hands into his head and his skull is about less than half half of that head size I mean, if you could see the skull it's tiny and all of that is bulky air filled feather it's just an amazing amount of feathers on these birds and their wings are double filament feathers that allows them to fly silently and catch their prey un detected by the prey they fly, fly silently over the landscape and they can detect their prey and stoop upon it and, and, and grab it okay i've gone a little off topic what i'm doing now is mixing up a very dark violet warm color just to put an extra level of definition and shadow into this mask remember i said that these feathers are up and down so you look down into them and one or two by that give you that extra shadowy area 
Now I've got the gouache out and I'm adding those tiny pinpricks of light at the top and underneath of each of those little grey specks that I put on earlier. They really do enhance the whole of this plumage on a bird like this. They are stunning and you could, if you want to, count every feather, put every mark exactly where it is in the photo if you so wish to do that. I certainly wouldn't want to do that. It's not and it was not my intent with this painting. It was merely to capture the beauty, the essence, the majesty of this wonderful bird. And this one, as I said earlier, has very, very special meaning to me because he was mine. He's my bird and I raised him from a baby and it has that added extra for me anyway i'm signing it and now and i'm uh, going to call it a day i think it's done i've had a lot of fun take care everybody okay there's one last little job i want to do i just want to put a little darker value there's some in here coming around to the beat and i want to put one or two coming off of there and i'll tap them back they're not to be too strong but they are just suggesting there's a little bit of sort of shadowing there off of that beat yeah. tapping it back i don't want to make too much of it just a little bit i think that's more than enough okay so that was the last mark and one picture of hooty done finished okay so if you've enjoyed this video this painting then please please give it a thumbs up tell everybody else out there that it is well worth watching this video and getting something from i really do hope you do that and if you are not a subscriber and you're watching this and you enjoy what i'm doing then please subscribe to the channel it really does help it grow in the long term and reach a much greater audience also add your comments and especially if you've got ideas of what you would like me to cover in future videos whether it's you know a bird or an animal let me know i'll do my best to uh, take that on and do a video on it for you or a quick tip if you want to understand about some aspect of watercolor painting that you're not quite sure of write it in the comments section i will always do my best to make that content for you and bring it into a future video so in the meantime it just leaves me to say thank you very very much for watching and I say, don't forget the reference is on my Patreon for you to download and freely use. You don't have to be a patron to do that. But have a go at it. Enjoy the process. And I'll catch each and every one of you in the very next video. Take care. All the best. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. And welcome back to the watercolor painting channel. Start again. Nearly. Hi, everybody. And... Okay. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel today. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel where everything is all about watercolour. What am I going to do for you today? Well, I'm going to do a... <laughs> Silly, what am I going to do for you? <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. The watercolour painting... No, no. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel where we talk about everything watercolour. Hi everybody, welcome back. Now, I'm going to start that big again. <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> okay everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, we're going to be doing a watercolour. Well, of course we're going to be doing a watercolour because it's a watercolour channel. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, we're going to be doing a lovely barn owl in watercolour today. So what I want to do is go straight into it, I think. That would be good. 